Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 374. We thank thee and we bless thee, O Father of us all, that e'en before we ask thee, thou hearest thy children's call. We praise thee for thy goodness and tender, constant care. We thank thee, Father, Mother, that thou hast heard our prayer. Hymn number 374. The scriptural this morning will be given by Amanda from Missouri. Psalms. O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. To see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than, my, than life. My lips shall praise thee. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. 
when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. 1 Thessalonians Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. We will now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven, our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious, hallowed be thy name, adorable one, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom is come, thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for 
for God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 237. Oh, may we be still and seek him, seek with consecration whole, listening thus to hear the message, far from sense and hid in soul. Hymn number 237. Welcome to the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin each Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion. And if you missed the one this morning, please be sure to catch it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. Also on Sundays at 11, we have a Sunday school for children, which is carried on through a, uh, a teleconference number, th which is available around the world. So no matter where you live, if you have a child of Sunday school age, please call us, we'll give you the number, and your child will be very welcome. Also on Wednesday evenings, we have a testimony meeting where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives changed through the study and practice of Christian science. And we have a nursery available at every service for the infants and toddlers. You can find us not only here in Plainfield, New Jersey, but also on our website, plainfieldcs.com. We have a channel on YouTube, 
And you can find us on SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can listen to all of our services either on our website, on our YouTube channel, or from your telephone via another teleconference number that we provide. And if you're not sure what to do about a cold or a flu, there's an article featured on our website by Mary Baker Eddy entitled, I've Got Cold. Next Saturday, we will have another Bible study class. So check the website for study questions. And please join us. That's next Saturday at 10 a.m. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. We will now have the reading of a testimony from the chapter entitled Fruitage in Science and Health, which attests to the healing power obtained just by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Shahidat from Maryland. From page 616, Grateful for Many Blessings. In the year 1901, Christian Science found me a hopeless invalid. I had suffered for seven years previous with a very painful back, the result of an operation. I could get no rest or sleep at night as I could not lie down. It had to sit propped in a chair with pillows around me. Only those who have suffered as I did can know the full misery of it. I had come to the end of material means and never hoped to get well. One day, however, while out walking, it was my good fortune to come to a Christian scientist's house, and there the teaching was explained to me. I was advised to buy science and health, which I did, and the study of this book has healed my back entirely. Christian science has also cured me of long-standing cholera of the throat and neuralgia with which I had been afflicted from childhood. Before coming into science, I had doctored with three of the best physicians in Seattle, but none could give me relief. I am no longer a sufferer, but rejoice exceedingly in Christian science. God's promise has been fulfilled to me. Be unto you that, that fear my name, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. From E.O. Georgetown, Washington. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 14 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, soul. The golden text is from Psalms. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The responsive reading is from Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou, thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Day Day from Georgia will now read from the Bible. Ephesians, 
Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Peter Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Proverbs Whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. 1 Samuel And there was a man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel, and the man was very great. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings. And David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus shall ye say to him that liveth in prosperity, I have heard that thou hast shearers. Now thy shepherds which were with us, we hurt them not. Neither was there aught missing unto them, all the while they were in Carmel. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thy hand unto thy servants and to thy son David. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away from their master. So David's young men turned their way and went again and came and told him all those things. And David said unto his men, Gird ye on every man his sword. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. Now therefore know and consider what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his household. For he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. Then Abigail made haste and took two hundred loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and an hundred clusters of raisins and two hundred cakes of figs and laid them on asses. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said, Let not my Lord, I pray thee, Regard this man of Belial, even Nabal. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thy handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord, who thou didst send. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. And blessed be thee thy advice, and blessed be thou, 
which has kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with mine own hand. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice and have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was, very, was merry within him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. But it came to pass in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, David sent and communed with Abigail to take her to him to wife. And Abigail hasted, and she went after the messengers of David and became his wife. Proverbs. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. She will do good, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. A woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Isaiah Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitation. Spare not. Lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. Second Corinthians Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Isaiah. And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance, forever, and my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation, and in sure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. I will now read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Heaven, harmony, the reign of spirit, government by divine principle, spirituality, bliss, the atmosphere of soul. To reach heaven, the harmony of being, 
we must understand the divine principle of being. It is the illumination of the spiritual understanding which demonstrates the capacity of soul, not of material sense. This soul sense comes to the human mind when the latter yields to the divine mind. Such intuitions reveal whatever constitutes and perpetuates harmony, enabling one to do good, but not evil. Man is the reflection of soul. He is the direct opposite of material sensation, and there is but one ego. We run into error when we divide soul into souls, multiply mind into minds, and suppose error to be mind, then mind to be in matter, and matter to be a lawgiver, unintelligence to act like intelligence, and mortality to be the matrix of immortality? Mortal existence is a dream. Mortal existence has no real entity, but saith it is I. Spirit is the ego which never dreams, but understands all things which never errs and is ever conscious, which never believes but knows, which is never born and never dies. Spiritual man is the likeness of this ego. Man is not God, but like a ray of light which comes from the sun, Man, the outcome of God, reflects God. From the logic of events, we learn that selfishness and impurity alone are fleeting, and that wisdom will ultimately put asunder what she hath not joined together. An ill-attuned ear calls discord harmony, not appreciating concord. So physical sense, not discerning the true happiness of being, places it on a false basis. Science will correct the discord and teach us life's sweeter harmonies. Soul has infinite resources with which to bless mankind, and happiness would be more readily attained and would be more secure in our keeping if sought in soul. Higher enjoyments alone can satisfy the cravings of immortal man. We cannot circumscribe happiness within the limits of personal sense. The senses confer no real enjoyment. The good in human affections must have ascendancy over the evil and the spiritual over the animal, or happiness will never be won. Work out your own salvation is the demand of life and love. For to this end, God worketh with you. Occupy till I come. Wait for your reward and be not weary in well-doing. If your endeavors are beset by fearful odds and you receive no present reward, 
Go not back to error, nor become a sluggard in the race. When the smoke of battle clears away, you will discern the good you have done and receive according to your deserving. Love is not hasty to deliver us from temptation, for love means that we shall be tried and purified. If you believe in and practice wrong knowingly, you can at once change your course and do right. Matter can make no opposition to right endeavors against sin or sickness, for matter is inert, mindless. Also, if you believe yourself diseased, you can alter this wrong belief and action without hindrance from the body. Do not believe in any supposed necessity for sin, disease, or death, knowing, as you ought to know, that God never requires obedience to a so-called material law, for no such law exists. The belief in sin and death is destroyed by the law of God, which is the law of life instead of death, of harmony instead of discord, of spirit instead of the flesh. The divine demand, be ye therefore perfect, is scientific and the human footsteps leading to perfection are indispensable. Individuals are consistent who, watching and praying, can run and not be weary, walk and not faint, who gain good rapidly and hold their position, or attain slowly and yield not to discouragement. When we wait patiently on God and seek truth righteously, He directs our path. The sinner makes his own hell by doing evil, and the saint his own heaven by doing right. Absorbed in material selfhood, we discern and reflect but faintly the substance of life or mind. The denial of material selfhood aids the discernment of man's spiritual and eternal individuality and destroys the erroneous knowledge gained from matter or through what are termed the material senses. Right and wrong, truth and error will be at strife in the minds of students until victory rests on the side of invincible truth. Mental chemicalization follows the explanation of truth and a higher basis is thus one. But with some individuals, the morbid moral or physical symptoms constantly reappear. Honesty is spiritual power. Dishonesty is human weakness which forfeits divine help. You uncover sin, not in order to injure, but in order to bless the corporeal man. And a right motive has its reward. The nature of Christianity is peaceful and blessed. But in order to enter into the kingdom, 
the anchor of hope must be cast beyond the veil of matter into the Shekinah into which Jesus has passed before us. And this advance beyond matter must come through the joys and triumphs of the righteous as well as through their sorrows and afflictions. Like our Master, we must depart from material sense into the spiritual sense of being. When we fully understand our relation to the divine, we can have no other mind but his, no other love, wisdom, or truth no other sense of life, and no consciousness of the existence of matter or error. Man is harmonious when governed by soul. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 133. I cannot always trace the way where thou, almighty one, dost move, but I can always, always say that God is love, that God is love. Hymn number 133.
Let's now sing hymn number 66. From these thy children gathered in thy name, from hearts made whole, from lips redeemed from woe, thy praise, O Father, shall forever flow. Alleluia, alleluia. Hymn number 66. from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passages from 1 John 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind, and it's infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. More matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. 
Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Matthew 10. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. Amen. Amen. 